The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. The futures have just, the S&P futures have just pushed over the 200-period moving average in the five-minute chart. I did that before. I did that earlier at about 6.30 this morning and then pulled back. So we're going to see how much uh, strength there is. Um, and now let's just go to the market. So this is going to be an important session in the sense that it closes it out what looked for quite a while to be a lousy year and then that move that move from october the 27th until this very minute uh that was really a spectacular move you can see it in the weekly chart so now let me go I'm, I'm going to start off right now <clears throat> with the dow chart left side is the daily middle is the weekly and the monthly chart is on the right all-time highs uh, we're looking at a leg C in the monthly chart. And just just to review uh, for those of you who are not quite conversant with the Chapman methodology, let me go to this particular chart right here. Um, I try to identify the lowest low bar using tentacles. And then what I do is I, I see each one of these higher peaks. As long as that, from that initial starting point, as long as that low is not taken out, the moment you take it out by one penny, you've negated any buy signal or any, any upward movement. You have to start fresh for the count to the upside. The count to the upside is very simple. It's alphabetical from A to G. Each higher peak, successively higher peak, gets alphabetized. This is called a floating letter until it makes a peak. Then it makes a peak. The moment it... it pulls back and then starts its upward movement and takes out the left side high by one penny it starts a new leg up so that's peak a one penny above that starts leg b a floating letter until it makes a peak etc and goes all the way and the idea is to get you from a buy signal to a buy mode if there is a buy mode triggered through the through the technical the veracity of the technicals and the strength of the technicals that implies that there should be at least four higher peaks and the alphabetized peak a is the first b is the second c is the, uh, the third and peak d is the fourth that's where other things can happen that's where you can get your sharpest decline that's where within three bars if it makes a new recovery high above that peak d it starts leg e and all you have to do is think to yourself there's an alternate account it could be e slash a then f slash b g slash c and invariably, the G slash C goes to D. And then what's exciting about the Chapman Wave Instant Restart, it's the only technique I've ever read in, in all the, I mean, been getting Stocks and Commodities magazine for 40 years. I don't know how many years. Um, I've never, ever seen grading of, of peaks to the extent where that fourth highest peak tells you that you could actually have a whole new four peaks to the upside. Uh, it's a real nice technique. All right. And you can never go higher than a G uh, in terms of the letters because there is no H. You can go higher, but then you have to say, is there an alternate count? Was that a G, C, C, and now you've got a D? But the idea is to alphabetize sequentially to the upside. Well, where are we? We are in the monthly chart in leg C. The MACD is good. The stochastic is uh, 70, uh, 78 percent, not quite 80 percent. So that's that's that is not great, but it's good. Uh, the on-balance volume is positive. The 9 is way over the 14. And that says it doesn't tell you. You need other techniques to tell you how high you're going. But in this particular instance, what it does tell you is that you cannot get a peak C. Let's just imagine that the high that we've seen in the Dow of 37,771, was it, yesterday? 37,778. We haven't got there yet today. Just imagine that that high, all of January, is not taken out. Not even by one penny. That means we finally make a peak C. That means you have to wait for February at the earliest to go to a leg D. No, no, no. That means, yes, if there's no higher peak, and look at this, you've got, you're within fractions. So how, 
how on earth could it not be that somehow next week there isn't one little pop to the upside? However, this is what the rule is. The rule is an entire bar has to be, uh, has to unfold without a new recovery high or at least a, a price high of the bar to form a peak. So that means you now have to go to February for leg D and then you have to go to March for a peak D. So the earliest we can get a peak D in the monthly chart of the Dow is well into the first quarter. So wait a minute, we've got a leg, possible leg A up in the weekly chart. Same principle applies. If, and I, I really don't have a choice, I have to put an up arrow here. Look, the nine is way over the 14. That green period moving arrow is way over the 14. Have to have some tea. <clears throat> it is positive that we, we, it looks like we're closing above the doji candle of last week. Okay. With that said, if this is leg A and the price is way above the nine period moving average, the green line, the, the green is way over the 14 period moving average, the black line, we are way above the 200 period moving average of 31,900. I don't even have to talk about that until one day we start to get to the 33,100 level. Meantime, the MACD is still, you see the histogram, the vertical line, still expanding. Look at the stochastic, flat at 96%. That's what you want to see if you're in a buy mode, right? And, and the on-balance volume is very overbought. So that says, be careful, you could pull back. Wait a minute, if we pull back into, the, into three weeks ago, the three weeks ago, the low of three weeks ago in the Dow, the week of the 15th of December was 36,231. That's 1,200, 12, uh, 1,300 points down, or more, 14, 1,500 points down. So in that regard, I do have to consider this an A. Let's use the same rule of thumb. So it's called the seven. I used to initially, uh, really in the beginning when I started hand charting, and um, I used to get, I call this the seven waveform, A, B, C, D, and then the pullback, so it goes uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the eighth leg down. It's the eighth leg, which is the one that goes down, that really starts to move down. So it's a seven wave form. That takes you at least from next week, at least another five or six weeks. If every week is up and the next week's lower and the next week's higher, and, the, and that just never happens. So it says at the earliest we can get the peak was uh, in the weekly chart would be uh, probably we're going into mid-February. So this is really positive. Ha, now here comes, this, here comes the story. The story is it doesn't tell you how low you can go if there is a sell-off. But under the normal constraints that I look at in a single leg A up like this, in a spectacular move with all the technicals, really positive. The big concern is that when you're up in the 98.13 area, you never get to 100 in the stochastics or stochastic. But when you get to the 98, surely the next big move should be the move down below 80% to the 70%. And once that starts, very often it goes all the way down to the single digits. That's what you've got to be careful of. Just wanted to give you a little heads up here to say what could happen if there was a trade here in January and where could we go. I'll be back in a moment. There's a lot to discuss. Dow's down five, S&P's unchanged. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I just I want to get to this right away since I was also tired. Um, ACHR is Archer Aviation. Now, I, I've, I've looked this up many times. Always look it up, and then I just don't remember if this is the one. Uh, let me just see Archer... Oh, sure. I don't, I don't know if this is the one that does the electric aviation. And then there's the new one that's just starting, um, does, just starting the um, flying car. That looks fantastic, I must say. Uh, so Arch is designed developing, yes, electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft used in urban air mobility networks. You know, I've looked at this for quite some time. It's kind of on, oh, do I have it? Let me just check here. I think I have it on my, yeah, I think I do. AR, I have it on my screamer list. I've had it before, and I don't know if I took it off because I thought, you know, this could just be so, it could be so long before it matures. Um, Archer, 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 Archer. No, I don't have it at this time. Uh, I have some others, but I don't have that. Yeah, so, um it's trading at 6.20 right now. This is what I would do. I don't know if they have options on this. I would just have a very long-term outlook. Um, I had spoken, I've mentioned this many times before. A friend of mine, he and I used to go to, I used to, I've been going to the, the auto show here in Boston, oh, for, for decades and decades and decades. And then they, they stopped it. And then with, with COVID, they stopped it altogether. It hasn't come back at all. But back in 2004 or five, I remember they had a, 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 the Prius had just come out, or it was just as Prius was coming out. And my friend said, oh, I'm not giving, the, I'm not giving, I'm not paying any money for oil anymore. I'm getting electric. Um, and he said to him, the automobile, the order's done. I said, you know, if you look at history, whatever you do, when there's a major change, where is where is a defining trend change, it takes 30, 40, even 50 years for the infrastructure to develop to the point where you can just get in, turn the key, and go. And he, ah, he said, no, come on. Well, they're what, 5%, maybe 10% at this point, we've got charging stations. Um, so 
it takes a long, long time. So for this to become a really functional um, an enterprise that is practical, um, it has to be ecological, it has to be definitely financially lucrative, it's going to take a while. So if you put this in your drawer and you just say, I'm buying it, and I'm buying it either for a really quick trade because I've done my homework, or I'm buying it for the long term, I'm just saying to you, if you can put this in your drawer, there's a chance that it could be zero, or there's a chance that it could be up in the double, even triple digits at some point. It, it just has that capacity. Some stocks, you say, I don't know if they could ever get to triple digits, but this one has the potential if everything comes right. But you're not talking about tomorrow. You're not talking about this year. You're not talking about the next three years. It's really a multi, it's almost like a, a decades long project. In that decade, huge things can happen. This once was in the 18s, and it dropped down to the uh, uh, one something, uh, 1 1.80 or 1 point something, 1 point some 90, uh, and now it's at uh, 6.17. So percentage wise, it has a lot. So I'm just going to say to you on a very short term basis, I see it pulling back. I can see it pulling back to the 590 to 580 level. That's when, give me a yell, we'll look at it again. But at this particular point, as look at the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. It just keeps going above and below and above it. So I, I suspect that this is in a sideways to, to slightly down trading range right now. But looking out, yes, this is one that has the potential. I mean, the story looks fantastic, right? Um, but I'm just saying to you, everything takes a long time in reality. All right. So with that said, um, I, I, I wanted to just cover. So what I wanted to do is this. I wanted to say for subscribers to my opening call for the first time in a while, we've taken a, a, a very slow short position, one to one and one of the indexes. But we've also got a very small, aggressive short in one of the one of the sectors that I think if this market comes down, this particular sector I don't say it should lead, but it should be a big participant on the downside. And so far, nothing here other than two to three technical indications that I have are saying that anything but a shorter term pullback. And here's what I'm looking at. <clears throat> what's the most what's what's the, what's the craziest thing that could happen here in the market? Well, that today, we, towards the end of the day, profit taking doesn't start for the tax situation, just realigning and a whole bunch of things happen. And suddenly there's a little bit of a slide, a little rug pull at the last hour and a half or so. And the market closes lower. And Tuesday, when we come back to work, the market is lower. And then what do we do? We're just looking at this rectangle here, some kind of a pullback in the rectangle. I, I'm looking at this initially as just a position where I'm trying to get a sense of feel for, for weakness and strength, what the residual strength that's left, and some of the weakness that I see creeping in based on my own technical indicators, right? And as a result, let's just go to the Dow right now. Here's your rectangle. So it says, wow. I mean, if you go into the rectangle, you're like 400 points, 500, 600 points. That's just nothing in where we've come from, 32,327 to 30, uh, 37,778, I think it was. Uh, that's spectacular gain. Um, well, the process says to me that this doji candle right here, that's like a magnet, and that at some point very soon, we should be testing this this bar right here. Okay. If you look at the S&P, it's a little different. Look at the struggle from this doji candle of five sessions ago, where it just missed making a new uh, recovery high, and then it squeaked a doji candle, then it squeaks to a slightly higher high, then it makes, whoa, wait a minute, this is a lower high. Look at this. Uh, 47, 84, 72, 47, 85, 39, 47, um, 93.30, and so far today, we're, our high is 47.88.43. Do you think that this S&P index is going to go to the 48.18.62 all-time high of January of 2022, two years later, 
absolutely, I think there's, there's no question. It's in leg D. We should at least test that level. And if we go one penny above the 48, 18.62 level, that negates everything about that peak B. And now we're in leg D. All right. So you finally get your D. And then maybe we start to look at a peak D. Look at the QQQ. Slightly different again. It's had very tiny candles. I mean, it's basically... Is this distribution where it's running out of steam to the upside? Well, we've seen this before. It went sideways and then it suddenly popped. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying, the MACD is starting to pull back, but it's still positive. The stochastic's still at 95%. That's really great. Unbalanced volumes only pull back a little bit. Hmm. There's still internal strength. How would it be? How, what would get it down towards the 405 level? It's at 411 right now. We'll talk about that. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. I just want to talk about the power of the Chapman Wave Roman candle. Look at this candle in the gold. Um, this is from the, this is, I should actually put the date in. Date never changes, but the price often does because it gets smoothed as a continuous contract. 2152.3 was the high, 12.423. So I'll just put the date in, 12.423. So that, that candle, Chapman Wave inside, this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle, big red one, inverted upside down. 
And we did close, not we, but the the gold contract closed below it, the, the low of that day, of the fourth, the very next session. And then it kind of meandered, meandered, and then it plunged much lower. So that says that that's a very negative aspect and a result of this particular candle. Then what happened is we crawled our way back in, and we're having a terrible time seeing this, uh, the... Right, the opening price of uh, 2094 as a closing basis. Even this candle right here, the close was 2093. It was under it. So the body of this candle is just maintaining. It's, it's like a magnet. It's just drawing the price in. So until we can see gold actually moving into the 21,000, I'd put it 35 area and definitely... This is still in place, only as now as a kind of a benchmark. It's lost its usage within two days. Now it's a different aspect altogether. It just says that if at any point for an entire day, if there's a close above 2120, that's really positive. It says now you can work your way towards the high. In other words, that 2150 area. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying, there's something wrong with this picture. Gold, and if you look at many of the gold, so we were in a gold stock, we got stopped out, I made a very tight stop. I'm just not prepared to mess around because with the dollar plunging like this, look at this, here's the dollar sitting right on, right? It's it's down five ticks at 101.19. With even this move from the 103s down to the 101s, I would have anticipated, if you said to me, uh, the dollar just plunged from the 200 period moving average uh, two points, you know, one and a half percent or whatever it is, where do you think gold would be? And I look at gold and I say, wait a minute. It went from the 200 period moving average up. I say, I, and it was at one, uh, 1900, and let's call it 1900 and whatever that is. Let me just give you that number there where it was. 1991. I would have said, Wow, it should be up in the 2150, probably the 20, even close to 20, 2200 level. So it's had a, it's had the same kind of proportion, but it hasn't had the excitement that you would think would be generated by the dollar going down like that. And if you're looking at the uh, silver, look at this. The silver, that's not a very pleasant looking chart. There's your peak B. This could turn into a dreaded H, but it's sitting on the 200 period magnet. The 200 period moving average. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's something not quite right with this picture. And if you look at the, the I don't want to, I don't want to take time right now. Other than to say, if the dollar next week actually sees a bounce of this level, the inside track support level right here, if it sees a bounce at the same time as gold pulls back. And the TLT, I'm just, this is a scenario. This is, you can only just look at scenarios and say, this is what I'm looking at right now. And this is a possibility. And I'm giving that possibility a higher reading than zero. It's, in fact, the possibility right now for me is moving from about 45%. Maybe by the end of the day, it'll be uh, up at the, um, uh, I, I would put it at 60%. And I, that's, what am I saying? I'm saying that I, from my work, I suspect that we're going to see some kind of a weakness at the end of the day and some weakness on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. And that's going to be the clue, almost the clue for January, if I'm reading this correctly. If, in fact, we close at the high of the day today and Tuesday we go even higher, that's just it's another picture altogether. There's a delay going on. And I, I don't know which is going to be the one, but I have to see. And if the Dow, what well, Dow's unchanged right now, but if by... Oh, I'd say, I say to subscribers, if after two, about 2.15 this afternoon, if the Dow is actually down about minus 60 or more, that's the scenario we're looking at. If it's not, well, maybe it's a delay. So that's what I'm looking at. And I'm not saying I'm, I have a major signal. I have the start of signals that are saying right now that there's a chance that we could see weakness, number one. And number two is there's a lot. You remember I said to you, this is the, this is the, if I got the right one, is this the one? No, that's the one. Okay. I've only got like the hint of a slightly dark cloud. It's like I'm looking up, and actually it's a little shady, a little cloudy today. Um, but 
I have got no real dog news cloud cover here, but I've put this in to say I have some hints. So I'm putting it only as hints. I haven't got a big, long rectangle here that says, oh, my God, this could be a really serious decline. I have the start of something. I need the TLT to drop sharply so that yields go up. I need the dollar to move higher. I need gold to move lower. There's a lot that I'm anticipating should happen if there is to be more than just a pullback. All right? I've got the start. I've got a little cl a couple of clouds out there, and that's all I've got. So I'm using other technical tools to say, well, keep sticking with those technical tools. Tools have usually worked well for you, and we'll see. So in the meantime, um, the TLT has support, a whole bunch of support of the 9-period moving average, the 14-period moving average of 98.13, and then the 200-period moving average of 96.57. All right, and he has your single leg A in the weekly chart, but it's way under the all-time high, of one, or at least the high of March of 2020 of 179.70. So this is just single leg A at this particular point. All right, I wanted to get those out of the way. Now I wanted to do some other things uh, can you repost your SPX chart? Are you, I think you mean SPX, SPXS there. Whoops, did I do something wrong? Did I type it in the wrong place? Probably. So let me just type it in here. Yeah, there. So you see this breakout? Now, I don't want to go through this. It is Technical Friday, but there's a lot to, to go through, and I'm going to run out of time, so I don't want to do that because I have a lot to discuss that I think is pertinent to how we start 2024. So within this context, I really don't have a choice but to call this a leg A. So I'm going with an up arrow. It could become a single leg failure pattern. We've seen that before. But after weeks and weeks from 4103, uh, the week of the 27th of October, to where we are right now at 47.81. All I can see is that there's a one-third, something like that, pullback maybe into the 46.12, uh, 45.50 area, the 9 and 14 period moving averages. Um, that, that, that to me would probably be a worst case. Uh, yes. So, JB, um, uh, that's what we're looking at. Oh, let me just do this here to see if there is any... No, I thought I'd get a trend gauge reading. No trend gauge reading. Everything's just neutral. So, okay, we've got that. And then we've got two segments to go. I've got a lot to cover. I wanted to show you the pattern that I'm say saying is, for me, kind of a benchmark here. You see Microsoft? Microsoft at uh, 376.56. The lowercase h goes to a lowercase m pattern. I think it's telling us a story about those Magnificent Seven. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So what I'm saying is, you see the sideways action since the high of the 29th of November at 384.30 for um, micro, for Microsoft. I should mention we, we're long. We've got a good. We got even got trading positions right now. That we're taking little bits off. We got that low that was right here. We added to the position, so we're taking little bits off. We wanted to get to three. Uh, I think 378 for the next little bit off just on the trading position. Why? Because I want to be building up a kitty for the stocks, the really the great stocks that at times you want to get in, but you're not quite sure if this is the low for that particular move. So you want to give a little bit more room, leeway to your stop, and that way we can we can increase the, the that that proportion. So that's really important to me. And as I say, I like for subscribers. We like to get into stocks. In this case, um, like the like the diamonds, which are up at a 300 and uh, uh, in the, in the 370s. Uh, Microsoft is in the 370s. Actually, it's probably the same as the diamonds, 376. And I treated this as a proxy for the entry point uh, back in uh, last the day of October as a proxy for our diamonds. And I said, I wanted something that really represents all the different uh, aspects of the market, which is the Dow, the S&P, the um, XLK, that's the uh, S&P Select uh, tech sector. <clears throat> and it just, it, I wanted, and the QQQs, it just needed to be in something like that. Now I can see some vulnerability, but how vulnerable, we won't know just yet. And as I say, I think we're looking at distribution. That's the way I'm looking at the market right now. And so the th three factors that I was looking at, the reason why we finally actually started some short positions. One is I've got a couple of technical indicators that say, oh, 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 uh, this is a level that you've got to be careful. I've also got some that say with the stochastic and the 97 and 98%, are you out of your mind? Well, we've seen before, let me go to this right now. What are we going to look at here? We'll look at... Um, that's the IWM. Well, what will I put? Uh, it doesn't matter what I put. I uh, would just go generic. We'll go to the S&P. S&P uh, right now. We've seen before how the nine period moving average can hold really well above the 14. And when you get that final little peak to the upside, it's like an M-shaped pattern, M-shaped pattern, M-shaped pattern, possible M-shaped pattern. What happens is that the price, like August the 1st, when we got the Dow short to the exact high, that was based on the unbalanced volume right there. Um, and I had a question. I, in fact, I, I typed it in, but I, I was going to use it when I do my uh, weekend overview. I probably will do it. I'll have to do it this afternoon or this evening uh, before I'm away. So um, that, it took a long, it took like eight, nine sessions before the nine period moving average crossed negative. Do we have the same sort of thing going on here? I don't know, but we'll see. There are enough enough indications to say, hey, look, yeah, on the left side chart, here's your unbalanced volume. That's extremely overbought. Uh, but the price is not really reflecting it just yet. It will if the Dow closes down 60 or more points just on the day, but that's not good enough. You have to have follow through um, on the downside going into, 
I would even put it Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, and we might even find that we get this sudden sell-off early next week. But there's such residual strength based on the 914 strength that there's still one or two up spikes that can go into maybe the middle of January, maybe the third week of January. But I am looking at this and saying everything I'm looking at suggests visually, that's one, but you can't just do things visually. You have to do technique, technically. But if I look at all the different indices and I, if I look at the way, look at this, Apple. Apple is kind of struggling. I say that this peak B absolutely to me looks like that's not a B. That looks like a D or an E. It's got every characteristic there. This is a B in the weekly chart. Look at um, Amazon. Amazon. Mm -mm. Also has this B, but it's holding a lot better. So there's enough resilience. I could call this an alternate count. I should. So let me call this an alternate count. That fits all the criteria. Ooh, did I make a mistake? I didn't. It fits all the criteria for an F right there. An F slash B. F slash B. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. But I can still call this a B in the weekly chart. No problem there. Uh, we want to look at Googie. Goog. Uh, Goog, if I don't type it on the chart, I can type it in the little rectangle here. Yeah, so uh, Google has got E to F, but actually that's not good enough. I like to, if I can get a full P, D, let's see if we can get that here. You had a D once at the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. So there's your A, there's your B, there's your C, and there's your D with the doji candle. The number of doji candles, it's just saying to me, you might be mistaken. You might be reading this all wrong. I'm reading it as some kind of distribution that says to me, be a little careful. So I'm done with that. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go to um, my first level, which is around 48.14. 48.23. Oh, wow, look at that sell-off. Yeah, this is this is what we were planning for. Um, days young, down 55. Okay, so we're down 55 in the in the Dow. We're down 12, 13 in the S&P. We got that peak D in the one minute. Oh, I didn't do anything because I was on, on air. And we hit the where? How important is the 200-period moving average? I, I don't even have to open it up. Look, right there, 200-period moving average, pow. 200-period moving average, pow. And now we're down sharply from that level. The day is young, but I suspect that we're about to start some, you can call it profit taking, but usually people don't wait until the very first day of the year and then say, I'm taking, but I am looking at the history. I, I, I need to go through this. I've spoken about it quite, for quite some time. Every year I always say, if the last week of October, the first week of November, the market has come back after the, the travails of August, September, the, the plunge that we often get even into October, but it's come back and is close to the yearly high. There's a real good chance that we will close the year close to or just about at the year, the yearly high. What I said this year is that it was all delayed. We got that low on the 27th of October instead of getting close to a high. And then the first week of November was the turnaround. So my, my thinking was, ooh, that's a little different. Now it makes the end of the year a little bit more, it makes it harder to assess based on the lopsidedness of the, the delay. Well, the speed of the move up, you saw those leg A's in the weekly charts, it was just incredible. So as I'm looking at it right now, it says to me that in the back of my mind, I was thinking, there's a really good chance that we do get January selling after such a spectacular move. How we get the January selling is going to be contingent upon what happens going into today's close. Now, I can't remember. I think with the new year is different to um, Christmas Day where everything was closed around the world. I think that the futures are open in some countries. Um, so I'm going to be watching that. So what happens on Monday when it's our January the 1st and some maybe the, I don't remember now. If I, I think the futures are supposed to be closed until 6 o'clock on Monday night. That's the 1st of uh, January. Um, I want to see what happens. Because if get that sell off early in, um, in January, the first couple of days of January, the speed 
and the duration, the speed, the duration, and the extent of the sell-off, if it's just mild, there's hoo hoo hoo. Be careful, there's still enough strength to have another pop to the upside. We saw that the 914s are still very strong. So I'm just saying, tentative move to the downside. Really. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So the one thing I've held off, and as I said, we, we, for the first time in quite a while, we've actually started short positions. Um, not very uh, aggressive, small. That's different to very aggressive. Just... Got to let the market play itself out now. 
And to try to get in front of the freight train means yeah, you've got to have a very strong helmet. Let's put it that way. But the volatility index is up 37 cents at 12.83. Remember, we spoke for a long time. I drew in this line right here, this long, this is the monthly chart of the volatility index, right there, sitting, just minding its own business. And it's been making lower lows and lower lows and lower lows, and actually lower highs as well. That doesn't say, oh, look at this. Now the VIX is ready to really move to the upside. What it says is, this is now a support level in the 12s. And if it starts to move higher, sustainability of the VIX index is really important if you're going to get a sell off in the market. So, unless the VIX index starts to trade in the 13, 18, 14, 50 level and hold there th throughout a whole day, selling will be brief. So in the meantime, just a very big cautious level. Have a wonderful weekend.